Do you ever look at IFR publications like instrument approach plates and feel like there's more to the story than what you're seeing? The details of procedures like this seem so set in stone, but the reality is that they're subject to change and are amended rather frequently. Fortunately, the FAA offers us a way to look under the hood at how these procedures are designed. The Instrument Flight Procedures, or IFP Gateway, is a great resource for status checks on IFR procedures and is on the FAA website. From their homepage, you can access the gateway by going to Air Traffic on the top menu and selecting Flight Information from the dropdown. Then, navigate to Aeronautical Information Services on the sidebar. This is where you can access a number of digital products like approach plates, charts, and supplements. We're looking for the IFP Gateway. We'll click that on the sidebar. Alternatively, you could just Google IFP Gateway and go direct to this page. Let's look up our home airport at Flight Insight. College Park, KCGS. If you haven't visited, come stop by. We're in the DC flight restricted zone, which means you need to apply for a pin, but doing so is easier than it's ever been. Turnaround times are about a week and we have a terrific on-field museum and are walkable to the Metro to get to DC. Anyways, here's the page for College Park. It's split into four tabs along the top. The first tab has our current instrument charts. These are the same things that are found in the terminal procedures publication or are easily pulled up on ForeFlight. The takeoff minimums show all the airports for this region. You can scroll to College Park or do a control F to find the airport. And our two instrument approach procedures, RNAV, Alpha, and Bravo are shown here. So far, nothing special here that you can't find from other sources. Let's click over to the second tab, the production plan. This shows the status of the procedures we just looked at. Any proposed amendments or new procedures under development are shown here. If you want to see if a procedure at your airport is subject to change soon, this is where you'll find information on it. As it turns out, there are a number of changes under development at College Park. Two new instrument approach procedures, the RNAV 15 and 33, are under development, with status pending and scheduled to be published in January of 2024. It's January 2023 at the time of this recording, by the way, so we're one year out from this. Similarly, the RNAV Alpha and Bravo are slated for cancellation on the same date. So the FAA is proposing to replace the circling only RNAV approaches with straight in RNAV approaches. Also, the takeoff minimums and departure procedures are pending an update. So this tab just shows the plan. The next tab, coordination, shows the actual procedure forms that have been submitted for review. This is the actual meat and potatoes of the new procedures that needs to be reviewed by FlightCheck, who will actually fly the procedures and check their appropriateness and obstacle protections and by others at the FAA. Let's have a look at the largest file at the bottom. The second page of the PDF has the actual approach plate for the proposed procedure. This is annotated prototype not for navigation as it's not active yet and is still subject to change. Besides the fact that this is now a straight in approach rather than circling only, three of the biggest changes from the old alpha approach are a hold in lieu of procedure turn at Piney, the inclusion of a terminal arrival area, and moving the intermediate step down Xylex back by a fraction of a mile and raising it to 860 feet. This is possibly done for increased obstacle protection on the final approach segment. The University of Maryland is almost directly beneath the approach path, and they're constantly building new structures. The rest of the file shows charts with required obstacle clearance areas shown per the TERPs. This really is a wealth of details to dive in on and learn about why certain decisions were made by the approach designers. Let's look at the proposed changes to the takeoff minimums and DPs. Again, we'll look at the largest file on the bottom. The designers want to amend the takeoff minimums for runway 15. There's an obstacle at 400 feet MSL, 1.66 miles southeast of the departure end of the runway, that prohibits standard minimums and a standard climb gradient. The minimums need to be at least 300 foot ceilings with a mile of visibility. Also, the climb gradient needs to be 300 feet per mile up to 600 feet altitude. In order to allow a standard takeoff minimum, which is just one mile of visibility with no ceiling requirements, the minimum climb gradient would need to be a somewhat ludicrous 3,159 feet per mile. The designers seem to recognize this and say that if it's disapproved, a minimum ceiling of 300 and the stated 300 foot per mile gradient will be required. The pilot will need to have enough ceiling to visually avoid that obstacle on the climb out. The current minimums are 400 foot ceilings with 3 miles of visibility, so the designers are able to bring those minimums down with this proposed amendment. The gateway doesn't just show proposed future changes, it also shows amendment history. Let's look at the last tab, Documents. The current instrument approaches at College Park, the RNAV Alpha and Bravo, 
are still in their original format. They haven't had any amendments. Let's look at a document for the ILS at Runway 23 at Frederick. This procedure is currently on Amendment 6A, which corresponds to what's shown at the bottom left of the current approach plate. These documents don't seem to follow a standard format, but they contain the raw information that is used to populate the approach plates that we use in flight. First, a look at the NOTAM issued for the amendment. This change took effect July 14, 2022, and involved the changes indicated in the last paragraph. Moving back, we could take a look at the full amendment. The actual procedure routes are listed, with the legs from the Frederick VOR through the Numbi, Fiesen, and Ricky intersections, the issued approach points are spelled out, for the ILS it's the decision altitude, and for the LOC it's 4.28 miles after the Ricky intersection. This corresponds to the FAF to MAP distance shown in the box on the bottom left of the plate. The next page has chart notes and minimums information. Everything here should correspond with what's on the instrument approach plate, so it's not extra information, but if you have any questions about a procedure, it could serve as an additional source of information. And in general, the documents in the IFP gateway don't constitute required knowledge for IFR flight, but they're just another tool you can use to be a better informed instrument pilot.